This is the Alpine Stars Supertech R10. It is Alpine Stars' latest racing helmet, and it is pretty much the latest and greatest helmet that you can get your hands on right now. The question we're gonna to answer today is, does your average rider need a helmet like this? We're gonna take a look at this helmet today, and we're gonna look at all the features that it's got, most of which are designed for racing. Then we're gonna look at the type of bike that I ride, and we're gonna decide if this helmet is a good helmet for somebody who is not using it as a race helmet. This helmet comes in three different trim levels. You've got your solid, which is this helmet with no graphics. You've got your team, which has got the team colors on it. And then you've got this one, which is the element. This comes in carbon, silver, and black, or you can get it in red, white, black, and carbon. If you've been drooling over this helmet like I have, you already know that the solid comes in at $999. The team comes in at $1199, basically 1200 bucks and uh, this one, the element, also comes in at $1,200. So basically for 200 extra bucks, you get yourself some graphics on the helmet. If you're considering this helmet as a daily for your non-track use or for your occasional track use, I just wanna go over some of the specs on it that were important to me when I made my choice and uh, give you a little bit of insight into how I made my decision. So the first thing and most important is the safety of the helmet. This helmet is made up of four different layers. So the top layer is 3K high density carbon. You can see that right here. A uh, layer under that is UD carbon composite. And then below that, you've got a glass nylon fiber layer. And then the final layer is an aramid fiber layer. Uh, aramid, you may know more by its, uh, one of its brand names is Kevlar. It's uh, used in ballistic rated body armors. So obviously a pretty good shell on this thing. They did not stop there and they took the shield into account. So one of the problems with uh, some helmets is if you do get into a crash, the visor can come flying off and then crash debris can go through and hit you in the face. Uh, this particular helmet is designed to uh, have the visor stay on in a crash. And because of that, it's got this metal clip right here, the latch in the front that latches down. And then you can see it's got metal latches on the side that hold it in as well. So the visor is designed to stay on uh, during a crash and keep your face protected uh, if you go down. Something else about this helmet that was really important to me is these cutouts right here for your collarbone. So basically, if you get in a crash and your head comes over like this, you don't want the bottom of your helmet contacting your collarbone here and then breaking your collarbone. So as you can see, this helmet has a cutout right here where the shell goes up like this, and then this is rubber and EPS foam underneath there so that if your head does kick into the side like that during a crash, this is relieved so that it's less likely to break your collarbone. Next up is the EPS protection inside the helmet there, the foam, as you can see in this drawing. Uh, this helmet has eight total pieces, and there's six different densities, and they are designed uh, based on the impacts that the helmet's going to take, the type of blows that it's going to hit, for how best to protect your head with that EPS foam. The other thing that we should mention is that it does have the ERS system, which is the emergency release system. Uh, you can pull on these, and the sides of the helmet, the cheek pads, will come out without having to take the helmet off. So very good after a crash to be able to remove those. Um, and still keep the head stabilized. So that's another important safety feature and this helmet's got it. Last but not least on the safety aspect of this thing is what Alpine Stars is calling their A-head system. It's a patented system that allows you to take the inner liners of the helmet apart and you can adjust where the helmet fits on your head by adjusting the way the inner liner sits in the helmet. It allows you to adjust the angle of the helmet forward and aft, so how it sits on your head like this. It also allows it to adjust up and down. You can fine tune it so that it gets dialed in exactly how you want it on your head so that it's the safest and most comfortable that it could possibly be. Next thing I want to talk about is vision on this helmet. Now, this is my old Arai. This was a great helmet and it served me really, really well for a lot of years. As you can see, it has a pretty narrow field of vision right here. Um, compare that to this Pista and you can see that it's got quite a wide field of view and it's a lot easier to see stuff out of this helmet, especially when you turn your head to look behind you before you change lanes. 
So having a very wide field of view is super important, but you've gotta be careful when you do that because you're cutting a hole in the protection layer of the helmet. So obviously the bigger they make it, the more the work that they've gotta to do to reinforce the front of the helmet and the chin guard so that they can take the strain even though it's got that hole in there. So, so you're starting to see manufacturers being able to widen that up. And this is one of the widest, if not the widest, um, uh, field of view out there right now. So this helmet has got 220 degrees of lateral vision. It's got 57 degrees of vertical vision. Additionally, it's got these lowered side lines where the helmet drops down on the side so that when you are looking to the back and trying to see to change lanes, um, you've got a better, better lateral view by having that cut out like that and drop down. So really good vision out of this helmet. Again, that was super important to me. Okay, let's talk aerodynamics. So this helmet, as you can see, has got some pretty impressive uh, aerodynamic features on it. Um, it's got what, mostly what you see right away. It's got this uh, race rear spoiler on it. There is a road rear spoiler. I'll show you guys that in just a little bit. It's got these winglets on the side. And if you see here, those go all the way through the helmet. So you can, uh, the air passes through right on the side. And then the way this visor is shaped, it's got these turbulators right here that uh, also uh, direct the air. So the turbulators are designed to reduce wind noise. This is an incredibly quiet helmet. This helmet with the road spoiler and without these winglets on the side was already a top performing aerodynamic helmet. And when they added the winglets and this uh, race spoiler, it reduced the drag on this helmet another four and a half percent. So it's a very slippery helmet when it's going through the air. It's not going to be catching out a lot of stuff. And like I said, it's extremely quiet. It doesn't make a lot of noise at all. Okay, the helmet's got 11 total vents. It's got seven intake and four exhaust. The intake are on the front here. You've got one, two, uh, three, four, five, and then this right here comes out to be the other vent, which is stupid and that's gonna get lost. So I'm trying really hard not to lose that. Uh, that should definitely be a flip thing. That's definitely something I'm not super excited about the helmet. And then on the back uh, is the exhaust vents, or you've got the exhaust vents right here for the rear, and then the other two are here and here for the exhaust vents. So. Um, that pretty much covers all the features. The only other one that I was concerned about is the certifications on the helmet. This helmet is of course DOT certified. Um, almost every helmet is. The DOT certification is pretty much useless. It's uh, pretty much garbage uh, certification. So uh, it's better than nothing, but if you're counting on that to save your life, uh, you might be in trouble. Um, what's a lot more impressive is the ECE European certification, which this has. And then the most impressive is the FIM certification, which is the International Motorcycle Federation. And the helmets are tested, it's the best of the best for uh, racing helmets. So to get that FIM certification, the helmet is tested for um, linear impacts, oblique impacts, and penetration testing. Uh, basically, the helmet has to be able to stand up to a 200 mile an hour crash for the racers to be able to get that certification. And um, this one has it. When you spend $1,200 on a helmet, they give you some pretty cool stuff. So not only did the helmet come with the tinted visor, which I've got on it now, but it also came with a clear visor, which is in here. And it is super easy to flip these, to switch these visors back and forth. Just pop this up. And then you push this lever right here. You push that up, this will pop right out. You do the same thing on the other side, it comes right off. In addition to that, you get this um, wind deflector that goes in under the chin right here. It hooks down in under here, and then this part slides in underneath these ERS tabs. Additionally, you get this road spoiler, and you can swap out the road spoiler for the race spoiler. I am not 100% sure what the difference is between the two of them as far as um, how it feels on the highway. I like the look of the race spoiler a lot better, so I'm gonna leave that on for now. We'll see how it goes. I may end up swapping to the road spoiler, but as you can see, it's got 3M tape right here. So that indicates to me that this is not something that you swap back and forth on a regular basis. I think you pick which one you want and you leave it like that. Um, I suppose if you're going racing and stuff quite a bit, you could just get some additional tape, flip them back and forth. Anyway, it came with a bag for the um, road spoiler, so keep that in there. And then you don't get just a 
bag for the helmet, you get a literal bag. Isn't this cool? So you get a full on helmet bag that keeps all of your stuff and keeps everything together. It even came with tear offs for racing, which I've got in there and have no need for, but pretty neat that it came with it. And it's a really cool, high quality bag. Nice and soft on the inside so it doesn't scratch the helmet up. So pretty darn cool. This is a full on race helmet. It's, it's the exact same helmet that you see in MotoGP that's on all of the helmets that say Alpine Stars when you see the guys going by. So the question becomes, do you need that level of protection when you're only riding, say, like my Honda 919 right here, or perhaps that R6 over there? Well, let's go find out. Stop by Cycle Gear and uh, got a Cardo system for the helmet. Had that installed, picked up a couple things for the 919, and uh, then went riding. I gotta say, it was kind of cool to walk into Cycle Gear because all the employees recognize the helmet and they're like, oh, you're the guy that bought the R10. So that was kind of fun. But all in all, uh, it's great. I love it. I, I am absolutely thrilled with the helmet. It is extremely um, comfortable. It is very quiet, uh, especially for a race helmet. I don't even like saying especially because it is just as quiet as uh, my Arai and, and it was great. It, again, it's extremely comfortable. You can definitely tell the um, the, the, the drag, the wind, um, the winglets and stuff are all working. When you've got your head uh, perfectly forward, then uh, the helmet, you almost don't feel it. Everything goes past you. Uh, the helmet almost feels like it's getting some uh, neutral lift to, uh, or some, some, some lift to make it neutral so that um, you don't have uh, the weight of the helmet and uh, uh, all in all, it uh, feels great when you're when you're looking straight ahead. When you turn your head, you can immediately tell that that uh, that those aerodynamics are going away because you all of a sudden do feel the helmet. Um, I also noticed that it is sitting wrong on my head for the way I want to wear it. Um, I definitely need to get it uh, tilted forward more. So um, I will be pulling that apart and using the A head system to adjust that. Um, because it's sitting a little too nose up for me to be able to see out of it the way I want. I've got too much view above the visor, not enough down below. So uh, we'll be adjusting that. I'm not sure how the aerodynamics stack up against the naked bike here because uh, your body's the sail on the naked bike anyway. So uh, the helmet is like, you know, almost the, the thing that's slipping through the air the fastest. The, the, uh, the bike and uh, me are not going through the air. You can definitely feel that on it. Um, I do need to try it on uh, the R6 and see uh, how it feels uh, on a fully fared bike and uh, and see what that's like. Okay, on to the question, is it worth spending $1,200 on a full race helmet when you're just going to be using it uh, for riding around on the streets? I think the answer is yes. I'm very happy that I bought this thing. I don't feel like it was uh, a bad use of my money. I could definitely have gotten a uh, Showy for probably $500 cheaper, $400 cheaper. I could have gotten a ride for $200 cheaper. The Corsair that I want is $1,000. Um, but I do really like the idea that this helmet has all of the full race uh, safety and tech in it, and it is the latest and greatest and newest thing. And uh, 
That's just really cool. And to me, my head is super important. Um, if, if I get an accident and I have a problem, uh, legs, arms, uh, those sorts of things I can deal with. If I uh, get a serious brain injury or something like that, I, I, I can't do my, I can do my job remote, but I can't do it without my brain. So um, I, uh, I think that this is worth it. it I don't know how much safer a full race helmet is over a regular street helmet, but even if it's just a little tiny bit, it's worth that extra money to me. So um, all in all, I think this is a great helmet. I really love it. I'm really happy that I got it and I uh, definitely think it's worth the extra money. And again, if you don't want to spend the $1,200, uh, you can go with the base model, which doesn't have the graphics on it. Save yourself a couple hundred bucks. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, let's see, YouTube thinks that you will like this video, and I think that you'll like this video. So let us know which one you like best. All right, peace, guys.